Welcome back! Today we're making a really adorable macrame angel wing Christmas ornament. So to get started, we're going to bend our wire at each end, forming a small little loop. This will help us pin our wire to our board, as well as prevent our knots from sliding off. Okay, so go ahead and do that to both ends, and then place it down on your board. Then grab one of your strands of 60 inch cord and fold it in half to find the center. Once you find the center, place it right in the middle of your wire and lay it across with your wire. And now is a good time to pin everything down onto your board if you have a board and T-pins. If not, no worries, you can always just tape this down onto your surface. Next, we're going to attach eight cords using a reverse Lark's Head Knot. And you want to make sure that you're going underneath both your wire and your cord because we're going to tie our Lark's Head Knot around both of them. And don't worry too much if your wire isn't perfectly straight. We're going to be bending it a whole bunch later anyways. But just make sure that you're going from below to tie your Lark's Head Knot because we want to make sure we're tying reverse Lark's Head Knots here. Now that we have all eight cords attached, you want to make sure that all cords are on the left hand side from the center of our wire. This is because this is going to be our left side of our wings. Next we're going to tie a row of double half hitch knots using that cord that we tied all our lark's head knots around. And make sure you're working from left to right because we want to work our way in towards the center. This pattern uses a lot of double half hitch knots, so make sure that you're totally comfortable with this knot. And if you're not familiar with this knot, go ahead and check out my knot tutorial playlist where I show it in great detail. Next, with your first four cords, we're going to tie a square knot pico. Now don't worry, it sounds really fancy, but all it is is just a regular square knot that's spaced about a couple inches below your last row. And then all you have to do is just push it all the way up to the top of your work. This creates a loop pattern or somewhat of a lace. After you've pushed it all the way up to the top, we're going to grab our very first strand of cord and we're going to use that as our filler cord and angle it towards the center of our work and tie a row of double half hitch knots. This row of double half hitches does two things. First, it just looks nice, <laughs> obviously. And second of all, it really secures our pico in place so it doesn't shift and slide around. Because our pico is sandwiched in between two rows, you'll have a little bit of a gap between those two rows of double half hitch knots but that's no big deal, it just adds more detail to our pattern. For our next row, we're going to tie two picots at the start of this row. If you're enjoying this macrame angel wing Christmas ornament so far, please do me a favor and hit that like button as your support is always greatly appreciated. Alrighty, after you finish tying your square knots and pushing them all the way up to the top, turning them into picots, we're going to grab the very first cord and tie another row of double half hitch knots. Alrighty, for the following row, we're going to do the same thing, but this time tie three picots, followed by another row of double half hitch knots. And make sure that all the loops of your picots are facing forward at the top and not kind of stuffed behind our work. We really want those loops up at the top so we can see them. Next, we're going to tie a row of diagonal double half hitch knots right at the corner here. So grab the fifth cord from the left. This is going to be our filler cord. And then the previous four cords, we're going to tie our double half hitch knots. So again, this is going to be a diagonal row. So make sure you're holding your filler cord at an angle so it creates kind of a triangle shape right at the corner here. Okay, so next we're going to add another diagonal row of double half hitch knots, but this time we're going to grab the next cord on our right. This is going to be our new filler cord, and we're going to tie a row directly underneath our first row here.
Okay, and now we're gonna do a third row of diagonal double half hitch knots right underneath our last two rows. Next, we're gonna skip three, and then the fourth cord is gonna be our filler cord. And we're gonna tie another row of diagonal double half hitch knots parallel to our previous ones. I told you we're gonna be tying a lot of double half hitch knots in this pattern. I know this knot isn't the most favorite knot in the macrame community, especially for beginners. However, this is the most versatile knot out there. You can create so many different things. This is how we add lines and shapes. You can turn these into circles even. I mean, the sky is the limit with double half hitch knots and I highly recommend that you practice them. And I feel like this pattern in particular is really excellent to practice with. Okay, so grab the next cord on your right and we're gonna create another diagonal row of double half hitch knots. Alrighty, so we're down to our last row of double half hitch knots on the left side of our wings here. So grab the very last strand of cord and we're gonna create our last row. To add on to what I was saying just a moment ago, I do really think that this is the best project to practice your double half hitch knots because we are going horizontal, we're going diagonal, and we're also gonna do it in reverse on the next half of the swings. So you're really covering all angles, plus this is such a small project to work on as well. Okay, so this completes our left wing. Now we're gonna work on the right side. So what I'm gonna do is bend our wire here at about a 90 degree angle. And this doesn't have to be perfect. What we're doing is just kind of moving it out of the way. We're gonna bend and perfect it later on. Since we've already done this once, I'm gonna demonstrate the right hand side of our wings at a much quicker pace. So attach your last eight cords using a reverse lark's head knot around your wire and the center cord. Then grab your center cord and you're gonna use that as your filler cord and tie a row of double half hitch knots. Then with your last four cords, you're gonna tie a square knot pico followed by another row of double half hitch knots. Then two picots followed by double half hitch knots. Then three picots and another row of double half hitch knots. With your fifth to last cord, we're gonna use that as our filler cord and tie a row of diagonal double half hitch knots around this cord. And then we're gonna repeat this two more times with a total of three rows of diagonal double half hitch knots. Then skip three cords, and then with the fourth cord, that's gonna be your new filler cord, and we're gonna tie two rows of diagonal double half hitch knots. And then finally, with your first cord here from the center, this is gonna be our last row of double half hitch knots. Okay, so now we're gonna trim our wire here, leaving about a half an inch. And then we're just gonna curve it around just like we did before, making sure that there is no sharp points and it's behind our ornament. And of course, repeat the same thing to the other side as well. Next, we're gonna trim all of our fringe off, except I'm gonna save our filler cord for last. And you wanna make sure that it has just a little tiny bit of a tail, because as we melt it down with our lighter, it shrinks down a little bit and you don't want your knots to fall apart. I like to use the side of my lighter to push it down flat so that it's all smooth. And of course, do the same thing to the other side of your wings. And as I said before, I like to leave the filler cords to the end because I find that the knots really slide up and down on that filler cord and I don't want anything to fall off. And finally, we're gonna create the hanger with a scrap piece of cord. We're gonna fold it in half and then tie an overhand knot at the end here. And then attach it using another reverse lark's head knot with your overhand knot at the bottom. If you love this Christmas ornament, I think you'll also love my angel ornament. I'll leave the link to that pattern on the screen now and I'll see you over there.